Come on in the room. Come on in the room. The Bucks win it tonight, 117-99. Over the Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic. Not here Orlando. Not <laughs> not here ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, no, all that was dead. Dead DOA. Dead on arrival. Come on in the room. Doc is our doctor. He writes out all of our scriptures. He gives us our medicine in our room. We are live at the Cream City Crossroads, the Guru. Trey Crosby at third. JT. Fast Pro CK. Fast oh, yeah, Pro. Yeah, Fast Pro. There we go. Oh, you yeah. oh, got some Fast Pro cat on the handle. Okay. Yes, All right. I like it. I like it. Um, the hey, when, were, uh, hold on. Wasn't Fast Pro the spot where Buddy was swimming yes. in the tank yes. with no clothes on in like me. Alabama or something? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I like Cabela's stuff. too, by the way. So, yeah, stuff yeah. might go down at the Bass Pro. Uh, 117 99. The Milwaukee Bucks take care of the Orlando Magic tonight. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I, I'm, I'm super under the weather, so we're gonna try my bad. We're gonna try and get this thing rolling for everybody. Uh, get at me at the uh, in the Twitter at TCIIESQ. The chat, what's up, chat? Uh, talk to us about the Milwaukee Bucks getting a dub tonight, 117. To 99 over the Atlanta Magic, back to back, and this was this was a, and we could call this was an important game. I, I wouldn't call an, I, my one of our, our, our radio buzz nine seven three said the Bucks b- beat a contender in the Atlanta Magic. I wouldn't call them a contender, but they were vying for the two seed. They had an opportunity there, um, and, and they and you know ultimately they they did not look good tonight. Uh, and the Orlando Magic was it was kind of an embarrassing, uh, pathetic effort. From Orlando and the Milwaukee Bucks came away with a 117 to 99 victory. Let's do it as we always do and go to uh, the game recap. Sponsored as always by the law office of Daily M. Johnson when you need defense. Off the court. Off the, court. Uh, right. the Bucks supplied plenty of defense on the court tonight. But when you need defense off the court, again, who knows? You're probably celebrating. Uh, this is the last home game for the Milwaukee Bucks. Maybe all the free giveaways they gave away to Dame Bobblehead. Maybe you had one too many tonight, and you're driving home. Maybe something happens. I don't know what's going on. We hope you're not. I don't want you to. But if you are and you're driving home, you had one too many. Uh, Carl Lawson, Daly and Johnson, traffic, OWI defense, criminal defense, temporary restraining orders, and injunctions. The law office of Daly M. Johnson, 608-893-8370. 70. So nice we say it twice. Uh, go to this website, www.dmjlaw.com. Sign up for free phone or in-person consultation. Uh, and, and as we do the game recap tonight, whew, man, you got 30 from Bobby Portis, 39 and 3. And I think he finished the first half. Bobby had the first half of 24, finished with 30 points. 14 to 18 again to start. No Giannis, 78% from the field, 2 or 2 from 3. He was a plus 22 tonight. Bobby Portis was unconscious, like 30 points in 30 minutes. It's crazy. Giannis goes out, and Bobby turns into Giannis. Uh, Malik Beasley still struggling, three points, three of nine, two of eight from three. He was the only starter that was a negative tonight. Uh, Brooke Lopez, 10 points, four rebounds, four assists. He was 14 from the field. He started off hitting some threes, uh, as he always does, beginning the games. Patrick Beverly, I mean, what what a player that, that the Milwaukee Bucks traded for at the deadline. And – the impact that he has had, and I know when he, when when Cameron Payne first went to Philly, I think a lot of people you know, Cameron Payne had some, had some nice nights, and we know that Campaign is a more gifted player offensively than Patrick Beverly. But Pat Beverly just does so many things, and he brings that dog mentality to the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, how many times did you see it tonight on the floor, diving for loose balls, doing all of the little things, uh, making plays. Thirteen. And the other thing I love about Pat Beverly, he goes and gets rebounds, and and that's one of the things I know people talked about. Well, I won't get into it, but the guards are crashing the boards. That's why they can't get back on defense. Shut up. Pat Beverly's showing you you can crash boards and you can get your ass back on defense. He picks up eight rebounds tonight, six assists, four six from the field. And how about his three-point shooting? A team high plus 27 tonight for Pat Beverly. Uh, Damian Lillard took a second to get going, uh, but by the time he ended the first half, he had things rolling and really took advantage of matchups with uh, Paolo Bancaro. I mean, he was, I mean, Ben Carroll was food tonight. Uh, and Damian Little ended up with a really nice night, 29, 9, and 6, 10 and 19 from the field, 3 of 8 from 3. Um, you know, that's one of those things where Damian Lillard, you find matchups, you attack match. Like, that's what I want to see more of, him look at a guy and say, you can't guard me. And you know what? The other thing, and we'll get to this in a second, but the other thing I thought I liked about Damian Lillard tonight, 
How many times did he like try to grift his way to a foul? How many times did he like go and he took the again? He took tonight. He took eight threes. He took nineteen shots and eight threes. A lot of what he did, he had a couple step back mid range jumpers. But a lot of what he did, especially getting himself going early, was going to the basket, layups at the rim. And again, you're not getting those calls. Like the the NBA has stopped calling those, you know, those touch fouls at the rim, and all. they're not giving them to you. And tonight was an example of it, where I actually thought the Milwaukee Bucks were the beneficiaries because I thought, and I think Bobby Portis ends up with five steals tonight. I think he committed fouls on like three of them, like the, the little dribble handoffs. I mean, he did a ton of reaching. And again, credit to him because. You have to what what they say in law school, JT. When or, or you know you you you're a corporate attorney. When you have to write that 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 memo to 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 the executive, the senior the senior leader, whatever, you have to know your audience, right? You have to know who you're talking. Bobby Portis knew his audience tonight. His audience was an officiating crew that wasn't calling it. So why not slap down? We'll see if they're gonna call you. Don't call it or not. Oh, you're not okay. Cool. We're gonna do that tonight. Five steals of Bobby Portis. Excellent night from him. Um, Jay Crowder at 14 points. Thought he was really good off the bench. AJ Green went away with an injury. He only played 15 minutes tonight. Uh, Pat Connaughton did his normal running around thing. And Andre Jackson with five points. Uh, looking at the Orlando Magic, uh, Ben Carroll, 26 and six. I mean, I, I like Ben Carroll, young player. I think he's going to get there. But I, I, it's just a very average. It's a smooth game. It's a very smooth game. But he's got to transition into I'm, a, I'm a dominant player. And right now, I don't see that dog out of Ben Carroll. I see the potential. It's there. But he's got to really step it up before I can call Orlando a, a contender. Like, oh, like, I, like I don't think anybody fears Paolo Bancaro coming in your building for a seven game series. I don't think they do. Uh, Suggs got a little upset tonight. I uh, got a tech on him, eighteen points, three boards. He did get fouled, uh, but yeah, it was just a rough night. Cole Anthony was the other bright spot, twenty three, four and four. Um, but again, just a, a really bad night I thought from Orlando. Um, really quickly, just on the game, I thought the Bucks played a really nice total, forty eight minutes. I thought the ball popped uh, for large moments of the game. Bobby Portis carried the Bucks. Damian Lillard carried the Bucks. And you're getting made 60 points from your from your top two scores. That was a big time help. And then you had Pat Beverly helping out as well. And again, just the effort. Like how many? I mean, just how many times did I see the Bucks ball on the ground? And I I, I counted Bobby Portis with the steals and the slap downs, and making and uh, getting the ball back from Milwaukee. I know Jay Crowder hit the floor at least multiple times to go get rebounds and get loose balls. And um, and I know Pat Beverly did it a few times as well. Just all out effort in a game that you really you could say you needed it. And because now at, at this point, the Milwaukee Bucks cannot finish any lower than fourth. And uh, coming in tonight, they could have finished as low as six. So you get a win. There are a couple of games left. You play Orlando again. You play um, the Thunder. And, you know, we'll see how those those games um level out but again it was just a really nice night for the bucks tonight 11799 uh jt that's what i saw what you see hey man i'm getting used to you holding the mic uh <laughs> but I, I everything that you agree with what i really like too though is tonight where Giannis being out you saw bobby portis being one of the ones who jumped up early and said hey i'm gonna put the team on my back tonight and bobby portis said man we're gonna start that we we we're gonna still take the belt out even though we don't got 34. and bobby portis with the 24 in that 24 in that first half and i believe he was uh, what was it, 11 for 15, shooting two for two from three in that first half as well. I, I When I saw it, I said, wow, maybe Bobby's on port, Bobby's uh, on pace to, to reach his career high. I believe his career high is 38 points as well, and I was hoping he would get it. But also, strong half from Dame, right, five for nine with 14 points. In addition to Brooke, you know, with 10 points as well, you had three guys in double figures. So you saw that the team was really – was trying to spread this thing out, and people were chipping in and stepping up. Uh, strong third quarter from Dame, too, with 12 points in the third. I thought Dame looked good tonight. I really did, and I agree with you when you talk about Dame deciding to go at to go at, at, at Paulo because the reality of it is, is yeah, he was an absolute mismatch. And I, I, I don't even want to say that, 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 that Paulo can't play defense. It, it, it's not, it, it may not even be that. Maybe Dame is just that much of a better player than him. And, and, I, and I think we, we realize there are levels to this thing. But I thought this was good, and I, I really hope this was good for Dame's confidence. Another thing I want to point out, you talk about Bobby Portis having five steals. He had five steals, right? And that's more than the rest of the team combined. I believe the Bucs finished tonight with nine steals. So and I salute to Bobby Portis for stepping up there. Patrick Beverly, we can't say it enough. Patrick Beverly, especially the last few games, we always talk about him being a defensive guy or being a defensive, being an energy, being a rah-rah guy. But Pat Beverly offensively can give you something. What that is every single night, I'm not really sure. But this last couple of nights, I mean, he was four for eight from three last night. He was three for three from three tonight. Uh, 
He's got 18 combined rebounds in the last two games. You saw him hit the hit a couple big threes in that fourth quarter and just being a ball of energy to, to kind of go ahead and and and, uh, and really put this thing out of reach. But I really like what Pat Bev gives you offensively too, because he is, he is still a pass first type player. He's not he's not just you rarely ever do you see him take bad looks, ever see him force shots. Uh, so I'm 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 happy with his contributions. What we see offensively now. One thing I will say, and I don't. I mean, again, I feel like this is the Mia culpa because I rode so hard for for Malik Beasley earlier this year. All right, y'all, 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 y'all about to pause me. I'm about to pause me. All right, Well, you know what? I was a, I was a fan of Malik Beasley earlier this year, mm-hmm. um, but he he he's just in a slump. You know, again, another another underwhelming night. Or was he three for nine, two for eight from three? You just you, you certainly hope that it's not in his mind at this point. He's not overthinking this thing, right? Or he, or he hasn't developed the yips because he's just had poor shooting nights in five, six straight games at least now. Well, and the thing I'm seeing with Beasley is like, dude, you're not going to be able to shoot your way back into it. They have to come natural. I think there was one specific play where I was looking at a three-on-one fast break and Dame skips it into the corner and he just rushes it three. And when you know you're not shooting the ball well, yeah, shooters keep shooting, but a rush three in in a fast break is maybe not the way to go about it. Uh, But yeah, I, I loved what I saw from Pat Bev. And mind you, this guy's doing this on a torn ligament in his wrist, I believe, uh, and a hobbled ankle. So uh, it just shows the energy and and the want to win every night from Pat Bev. I love it. And I think he he gives you another option out there on offense when he's on the floor with Dame to just get him open looks. And I think we saw a result of that tonight. Obviously, no Giannis. But, you know, I think Dame really was aggressive tonight. And like Trey said, I, I love the fact that he wasn't just out there looking for fouls. He was going to the rim looking to score and that's what we need out of dame did a good job of like trey said hunting matchups finding those shots that he can hit and the catch and shoot and i think pat bev created a lot of those looks for him uh and then i also want to touch on just the ability to capitalize off turnovers this is what makes this team great because when you run out in transition even when you don't have Giannis, you can still be dangerous and they showed that tonight they showed that they were the more mature basketball team the more talented basketball team look i've been trying to tell you about this orlando magic team but uh we'll see what happens in in the next game but i'm glad that they got the win and like I, my prediction is three and one, so maybe maybe they exceed that. Maybe they go four and zero, oh, but it gives us an opportunity to maybe sit uh, some of the guys for for the playoffs. And so I'm excited about the about the future uh, this season. And Doc has to write some prescriptions and give some medicine to Trey Crosby the third. Yeah, I need <laughs> I need some medicine uh, as well as to try to power through this week. Um, coming up on the playoffs here, um, six oh eight UW says belt to ass. Uh, Cream City, oh, that must be you, uh, Chris. You said belt to ass. Everybody's belt to ass. Uh, absolutely. Iron Man Clan TV says Bobby with the 30 piece. King of Kings says Bobby should be six man of the year. Uh, they, you know, you definitely make He definitely has a strong case, strong argument. Um, State of Mind says so many steals from the Bucks tonight. High energy, active on defense. Uh, Pat Bev is a dog. Shy Hef says, I'm selling belt to ass tour tickets. We back. So, again, a lot of enthusiasm. Q Money's asking for an update on Yadis. We will do the update on Giannis in just a second here. So we'll, we'll talk about Giannis. Tony Ross says, no Chris, no problems. Well, yeah, no Chris, no problems, but no no Giannis as well. Um, and uh, then we got a shout-out. I can't I can't see the comment anymore. Somebody shout us out for doing the 82-game season. Again, these are the games, right? The dog, I don't know how it's a dog. They were in the season, but on a back-to-back, the Cream City crossover is here uh, doing what we do. So, again, uh, appreciate to the fellas tonight. Uh, for, for showing up and showing out in a 117-99 win over the Magic Iron Man clan. Also chimes in and says, uh, this day makes the Bucks terrifying. And um, we'll do uh, one more here. Um, oh, that was K&A Family said, appreciate y'all working the 82-game season, actually. And then Jay Wan says, in years past, this team panicked. Giannis out. The team did not flinch. Um, the only people panicking now is us. Um, yeah, so again, those are all, all, all poignant comments that, that make a lot of sense here. I think everybody kind of feels the same. There's a comment, this game was kind of stale. I mean, you know, it, it, it was, it, it was just bland. And that's, you know, that, that's the kind of difference that Giannis makes on a basketball team where, you know, you just don't have those exciting plays. And, you know, it was, it was a little bland and, and I'll agree with that. And I thought Orlando really didn't show the effort and the fight that you would th- think that they should have shown, uh, as a, as a team fighting for the two seed. But, again, this is an important win. You did it without – and let's talk about that for a second. Doing it without Chris and, and Giannis, again, Bucks on the back-to-back, 
do you take anything more from that that and I don't even want to say Bobby because you know we know what Bobby does. He was Bobby Buckets tonight. He he was excellent. He has those moments where he's in and out, and you know. And I think as a six man of that type of player, you can't. I mean, I can't ask him to go get 25, 30. I mean, like I can't ask for that. I can ask for like you said tonight. He was swiping down gospel steals. I think it was it was really nice. And again, he scored the ball at a high clip. We know he's not going to do that every night. He's not. He's just not capable. He's going to go up and down at times. Damon Lillard, though, is capable of 29-9-6 as JT finishes up the dishes. JT, is, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> Dame Lillard is capable of the numbers that he put up on a nightly basis. So I think the question, the question in the chat, and I'll ask you guys, why is it that he that it seems like, and again, so Jay Wan, I know we say we talk a lot about Dame. I'm praising Dame tonight. I thought Dame did a really nice job. He looked good, like we talked about, and, and just went after that Ben Carroll match. Like, the Bucs should do that more often, whether it's Brooke in the painting, it's small, whatever it is. When you see a matchup that you are winning, exploit the hell out of it over and over and over again until somebody stops it. And Ben Kara couldn't, and they they just didn't have any answers. But why can't Damian Lillard, or can he? What is it going to take for for this to be the effort that we see and the output that we see on a nightly basis? It, when Yas and Chris are a lot of, is he just? I don't want to say is he not capable of doing it when he has to share the ball that much, or like what is? What is the deal? Because these numbers, 29, 9, and 6, those those are, are playoff level. Okay, when you add in Giannis with the 30 and Bobby putting 20 and Chris giving you 20 and Brooke giving a few threes here, when you add all that together, now you're cooking with gas. What is it going to take for Damian Lillard to do this with everybody in the lineup? My guess is, is is confidence. He needs to be, he needs to have the confidence to know that he can do this and not have to think, oh, I got to get Giannis his look. I got to get Chris's look as well. I think we've seen Dame. He's been tentative at times, and we've seen we're like, man, why is Dame not attacking here? Why is he not doing that? And it's and it's comfort. It's a comfort issue. I don't think anyone can say Dame has looked comfortable all year. Having said that, though, I do think that Doc. You know how Doc went down the line and told everybody their roles earlier this year. I think we might need to do that again before the playoffs, and we need to go ahead and we just need to go ahead and reestablish everybody's roles and let them know. Dane, look, you got the green light. You see it. Look, take it, take it. Don't be hesitant. Don't be don't don't pull back. Don't think, oh, I got to feed Giannis. I got to do this. You're not gonna run the Bel Air Academy off offense. You're not gonna play hero ball with this team. There's too many. There's there's just too many other guys on the squad to you know to to help carry this thing. So there's no reason why. He should feel that way. I, I I feel a little bad for Dane because he he went from Portland where they really had nothing. I mean, yes, they had a few players that were maybe above average, but nothing like the team of the Bucks here. And you just have so many options and so many weapons. And it's, you know, for 10 years he played without that. So now he has that. And I think it's just sometimes it's in his head. But I really hope Dot goes back to down the line and before the playoffs tells everybody their role and 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 really establishes that confidence in Dame and lets Dame know, no, look, you are one of our leaders. You need to take this. You need to be aggressive. You, it, look, man, don't turn to Dame time. Watch off. We will adjust. Yeah, I'm on the same lines of that. I think it's just mentality. We saw in the press conference last night where he said, "Okay, well, some guys have to make sacrifices um, when when." things are working uh, in a different way. And, and he was ultimately at the end of, of those sacrifices last night. And I think he, that's got to change for sure, especially getting into the playoffs with this team and how inconsistent some of the guys play, some of the role players play. You've got to be aggressive no matter who's out, no matter who's in the lineup. And so you you can't worry about the sacrifices of, of what's making the team better. I think you have to take control because that ultimately wins series. And we've seen that throughout – pretty much the history of the NBA is just how good are your best players going to be on a night nightly basis in the playoffs. And I think that's got to happen no matter what. I don't care if, you know, you're, you're up 20. You need to continue to put your foot on the other team's necks. And, and I, I think that's where just he kind of has it messed up. But I think that can change for sure. Yeah, and, and, and Jay Wan's in the comments saying that he plays too passive when they're, when they're not there or, or when they're out there. Um, I mean, Karan, uh, Jam, Jamar Kenner says he's a poor passer for his position. I actually kind of somewhat agree with that. Um, he, he's, he's an okay passer, but he's not like a, a you know, a, a great distributor of basketball at all times. But, um, but yeah, and, and then Iron Man says, uh, Giannis needs to set some real picks. Giannis, is, yeah, he's just not going to do it. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think that, you know, any, every, every player has flaws. Like you're not about to make Giannis hit. Giannis isn't going to turn it. Now, again, is there a game or two where you can hit? Free throws like he did in the finals. Yep, you're not about to turn. Giannis is going to shoot 90% from the free throw line. 
in these games. So I like it's some I, like what I expected. No, he's gonna miss free throws. Is he about to turn into some? Is he about to turn into Rudy Gobert and set screen assist all night? Hell, no, like it's, it's not happening. So like this. Let's not talk about things that aren't going to happen. Let's talk about things that, that to me, that he, that, he, that, that he is capable of and that he will do. Um, but, yeah, and I agree. There's another comment that how many times Dame should shoot the ball. But I just think he just can't settle. Like, that is my thing. Not just that, you know, he has got to score and can't be passive, but he also can't settle. Because when you're just stepping back and shooting threes, and you, and you that's how you end up – that's how you end up, you know, three for 14 from three. Yeah, it's because yeah, I, I, I hear I'm gonna ch- I'm gonna I'm gonna act as if I'm aggressive. Being aggressive doesn't mean you just shot the ball. It means you took good shots, the right shots. And again, tonight he took he, you know, he finished forty basically forty percent for three, three for eight. But um, ten and nineteen from the field, and so he made more. He 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 absolutely got to the basket. And again, he's got to find those mismatches, and that's what he's got to do. Um, you want to uh, jump to and then oh, one more before we go to to the Giannis update. Um. I think this is Mark Gomes or Gomez says, uh, don't ever talk about a Bobby Porter's trade ever again this season or next. I'm I listen. Nah. Again, here's here's where we are with that. And I, I hate I hate doing this because I like to be positive, but then it's like we gotta do these like, nah, I gotta apologize. Listen, Bobby Port, we know that he can do some of these things. Like nobody's saying nobody's I, mean, I guess I probably did say he's trash, but I'm in in theory, I, I nobody's saying that he's like the worst player in the world. The issue is it's very inconsistent. And like I said, we know Bobby can't put up 30 every night. Like this isn't a normal night for Bobby. This is one of those flash in the pan nights. And the good he's just got to be – right, He's he's got to be more consistent. And that's what we want to see because, again, I, I, you know, I, I like it. But I like I like Bobby Portis, and, you know, he had a really good night tonight. We need to see more of this. And what you can't do is you can't come back, compound bad shot after bad shot. Again, tonight they were going in. There are nights we've seen where they don't. Um, but I guess that that's how that's how I fall on the on the you can't ever trade Bobby Portis. I'm not going that far at all. So so I think to be to be fair, right? Part of the issue with Bobby Portis was that you've seen some of this over the last four years. But it, what happens playoff time? What happens when you get to that second round of the playoffs? You're seeing all of a sudden Bobby's not playable. It's like well, where are his contributions? What's going on here? I don't think that's going to be the case this year because it does feel like Bobby has turned a corner offensively and has stepped it up even more. And I think you could look at the last probably 10, 15 games and see like, wait a minute, Bobby Portis is really, really from, from, from shot selection to efficiency to everything. He, he really is stepping into another gear here. And I'm excited to see Bobby in the playoffs this year, not only because of what he's doing offensively, but defensively, Bobby's defense has improved. I think we can, I think everybody can say that. I'm not saying it's leaps and bounds ahead, but I think Bobby's gotten better defensively than what we've seen in the past. Now, was that a, was that a very high bar to clear? I'm not, I'm not really sure, but at the end of the day, He's gotten better, and I think Bobby's going to have a role. He, he, Bobby should have a role against every team that we would face in the playoffs. There's no question about that. Now, about 40 games ago, we said, Bobby, you got to trade Bobby. But it wasn't because we didn't like Bobby. It's just because that was the only piece that you really had if you really wanted to make a big move there. And Bobby was not looking good. It, Bobby looked bad for a while. So that's why we talked about trading Bobby. Having said that, I'm glad he's on the team now because Bobby is balling and Bobby has definitely given us a, a, a very strong a, a punch off the bench. And I, I, I certainly think that Bobby's going to be a key contributor for us and making a material impact in the playoffs. I think there's been a better level of consistency after the all-star break from Bobby, but I also think that, you know, he has those microwave moments in those first halves, but we've got to make sure it's not that easy to just go into halftime and adjust to Bobby Portis. Like we've got to see, uh, I want to see a 40 point game. Can we, can we feed him the ball and get 40 after he puts up 24 in the first? I think that would be dope. And I, I think that there, there could be some, some real uh, merit to that if, if he's able to just continue cooking. But I think there, it's a little more easy to game plan for him. And uh, you know, coming in into second halves and stuff like he, he might have a first hot first half, but then, like I said to Trey earlier, like, uh, he'll probably get four in the in the second half. So it, so you see those inconsistencies creep through even on performances like this. But yeah, no, he's been he's been really good to me uh, in the in the second half of the season. And I, you know, I, I don't know if his defense is all that much better. I really think he has been a beneficiary of the rule change. And I think you saw it tonight where they just don't. I mean, those they, they're not calling a lot of ticky tack fouls, and so you can get away with the bumps. You can get away with playing physical. You can get away. You can. Like, this should benefit the way the officials are calling games now. 
since February, since that memo came out with Adam Silver, you should be able to – the teams that are more aggressive should should have an advantage. So Bobby Porters, I don't – again, he's not a great defender. Take more risks. You can gamble more. You can bump a little bit more. You can do a little bit of that because they're, they're, they seem to be calling the games a little looser. Same with Damian Lillard. You're a bad defender. Take a few more reaches. Try to get your hand in there to get to knock to knock a basketball out. Whatever you have to do. Um, don't, uh, Patrick Beverly, super aggressive defender. The the new rules should benefit guys that are very aggressive. And I'm hoping. And like I said, somebody talked about Bobby blitzing. Like that's one of his best. That is one of his best attributes as a defender is when he comes out and blitzes on those on those screens. And he has active hands. And a lot of times those again turn into fouls. But now with these new rules, they're just not calling them unless it's very very clear and obvious. Um, that that these are fouls, and so I think again, it's um, it, it has benefited Bobby. And again, you, you like we said, know your audience, go out there, and if they're not gonna call it, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with taking advantage of it. Um, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, the update on Giannis uh, came out early this morning um, that he, of course, I gotta find it now. Um, this and, I, and here's the other thing, I, I always think when uh, so here, here was the update from Sam this morning. Um, Bucks Giannis Antetokounmpo has avoided damage to his left Achilles tendon, a uh, best case outcome, and his return to play is based on treatment and rehab um, response for a strained calf. League sources tell the Athletic. Now I'm gonna tell you why I felt really good about that because that came out at about eight in the morning. I always get weary when the MRIs happen and you don't hear nothing all day. It just so that's uh, to me. I, I don't know if that's true or not. It's just something I feel that I feel that, that takes place in the NBA and different leagues. When you have good news and the guy isn't really that hurt or it's not as bad as you thought, you put that out. Hey, we're good. Stop the panic. Stop Stop the alarms. We're all good. Um, it seems like this is a one to three-ish week injury. The Bucks playoff game would be on, I believe, the 20th or the 21st. So you're talking about from now that seven, eight, nine, 10 or 11 days. Um, the injury took place yesterday. So he's having 11 or so, 11 to 12 days right around that two week mark to recover. I think the, you know, one, just knowing Giannis, a couple things, because I think there's a lot of different trains of thought on this. And I wonder, I wonder where you guys are. Cause a lot of people will say, and I've, well, and I've seen, I've seen every side of this. Don't bring Giannis back until he's a hundred percent healthy or 95. Like he's got to be very, very close. Don't bring him back before that. Now, case in point, a lot of people talked about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant had the exact same injury, calf strain. Everybody remembers him in the hallway, hopping around before the finals, and then he popped his Achilles. Uh, I remember Drake, <laughs> Drake was in there looking like, oh, man, can't believe it. Um, and that's the concern. That's the risk. You know, when you have a calf, that, you're, that your calf is going to continue to hurt or when you come back and you'll put extra strain on it. could also hurt the other leg. I had to happen all the time in college. You know, pull the hammy, pull the groin. You get out there, you know, you run them gashes, whatever, and you know, you're it's you don't even really subconsciously you're using that other leg, right? A little bit, a little bit further to, you know, to 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 what what's funny? What's my last right. <laughs> I'm just, like, I, I'm just uh, well, no, I mean, and, well, and to finish your thought though, you're overcompensating, right? Like, what yeah, happens, you're right. You do that, your body over your body overcompensates, and and. You know that's a that that is certainly an issue, especially if one is bad and the other's doing that. And you and you worry about all right. So the hamstring was bad. Now the calf is bad. If it's the same leg, it's like okay, what's going on here, right? Is there a balance? Well, I was laughing because <laughs> how did you pronounce groin? Groin. Okay. Was that groin? What did I say? You saying like growing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. my groin. Growing. 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 It's my groin. I say. I feel like I say groin. I didn't say it right. I was like, oh, there, there, there's the country train coming out. That's all. <laughs> I, am, I am from North Carolina. Still, still growing up. What? <laughs> like, no, I just, I couldn't help it. Sorry. But no, I, I, well, I was going really to throw it to you guys anyway. Uh, yeah, that, you, we finished the thought there. Yeah. So, what, what is your train of thought? Do you, is, do you need Giannis back game one if he's 70, 80 percent risking injury, risking again? Because you, you tell your Achilles. You're not. You're out. Next, this is a, that you. That's a that's a year ish injury. That you're pushing way out to the future now. Do you risk that for this playoff run with Damian Lillard, with Chris, with with Brooke, this squad, or do you play it cautious, play it safe, and say, hey, we're gonna let this thing fully heal, 
full two weeks ish, whatever, and we'll bring you back game two, maybe game three. Maybe we see how game one goes. Maybe we lose game one and now game two, you gotta come. Um, where do you where do you come on? Come on. <laughs> Oh Where wow! Oh, oh, oh. Today, hey man. yo! All right, look. So yeah, what right, I, I, I'm in the camp where I want him to be fully healthy. I don't want you at 70 to 80 percent and risk further injury here. And I also think, again, this is where Doc and John Horse need to earn the paycheck. This is this is where you earn your paycheck when all of you when all of your depth, right? The trade for Damian Lillard kicks in. Not trading Bobby at the deadline. The trade two years for Jay Crowder. The trade for Patrick Beverly. All of that needs to needs to kick in these guys give your chance give give doc a chance to earn his paycheck give the rest of the guys a chance to 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 step up and see if they can't keep this thing on the right track here i i 100 percent don't i don't think you rush him back in game one for a couple reasons one the bucks are an elite team the goal is to play 28 games in the playoffs now i understand that you gotta you can't play 28 if you can't win the first four Right or, the, or you can't win four out of the first set. I, I get that. I hardly get that. But on the same note, rushing Giannis back, risking further injury. I would I would much rather have Giannis start playing the second game than play the first game than not be able to play the fifth game, not be able to play the sixth game, not be able to be, because you skip steps in the rehab just because you were you were pressed to get him out there. I think that creates a bigger issue for you if you rush Giannis back. He's not 100 percent and he gets he gets injured and then he, you're looking at him potentially having to miss extended time in the playoffs. That's a concern I have, but nah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make a statement. There's three teams that are playing relatively well outside of the Heat. I think the Pacers have kind of picked it up after you know slacking a little bit, and then obviously the Sixers getting MB back. You gotta make a statement. You cannot even lose one at home, I don't think, and especially that first one, and give the opposite uh, team any momentum uh, going into Game Two and then bringing it back home. It's just we saw it happen last year. Um, and you don't want it to happen again. You've got to make a statement. With this team, you need to have Giannis out there. Obviously, they say, what is it, 17 days for a normal person? Giannis ain't normal, boy. Giannis is, Giannis is a superhuman. I, I believe in him. I think they're – I think they're the rehab team and, you know, all all what Giannis has been through, I think he'll be all right and I think he'll be good to go. And I, I really do want to see him out there because I just – I can't have that momentum go the other way with these first two games at home. I just can't. I can't do it. Chris, I'm with you. I mean, I, I, I think I'm with you on this one. I'm And here's the only reason. I see people in the chat sound like the chats. A couple of guys saying, you know, no, you're resting. I saw this last year. I saw this last year. I saw – the Milwaukee Bucks try to rest him last year and sit him and, you know, make sure he was 100% healthy. And you went, and again, he missed. So the, he, think about it, really played about really three games. I, he only played, like, I think 10 minutes in the in the first game when he got hurt. So the Bucks lost one game without him. Then they won game two and lost game three. So they were dead. They lost two games without Giannis, and he probably could have played um in in at least in in game three and i think they felt good because they, they tied the series up one one they're like all right we good that was detrimental losing that game i don't know whether the books were won the series or not i i i i don't know but i've already seen this movie i saw the movie before where you think yeah we can beat whoever's in front of us if he is now again if he can't go he can't go but i would here's a, here's what i'm saying i treat this i would treat this like it was the finals i would treat it like it's the finals because if if and this is the barometer I would use, if this was a finals game and he decided he could go, then he would go. If this was the finals and he couldn't go, then I then no, I wouldn't play you. But if you think if 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 everything was on the line and you could make no, I can go. I got you. Got to go like that because again, these moments are fleeting. And I bet you Trey Young right now. Remember that Atlanta basketball team in twenty twenty one when Trey Young got hurt. And I'm telling you, I saw him running up and down the sideline. He had a bad foot, bad ankle. He was running all up and down the sideline. I don't understand why he didn't play. I don't understand why he didn't play. You know why I think it was? I have a sneaky feeling that he could have played, but it was, eh, no reason to, to risk. I don't need to risk this right now. We'll be back. And as we all know, there's no guarantee that you get back in this thing. So, again, the Bucks since 2021 haven't been close, haven't reached the conference finals. I think you got to – I think if you can play, you go play. If you can't, you can't. If you can't, you can't. We we're not out here on on the Anthony Davis type of type of level here. But the thing is, I, I, what I where I what I don't understand with with the analysis you just gave is how you're ignoring the fact that we have a different team this year. 
We have some. Uh, we're not relying I've, on. I, I've seen that. Well, I know that, but I'm I've saying, but it, but, it, but it ain't like we're relying on Drew Holiday or on 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 Drew Holiday. We it's not like we're relying on Drew. We're relying on. I mean, we have a top seventy-five player who can put this team on his back as well, and with the talent he has around, he can make this thing happen. There's no question about that. There's no question that he could that he could that he could, has the potential to float this team for at least a couple games. I mean, I mean like, let me ask you a question, JT. Let me ask you. Base, okay, I, and I know you're 100 percent correct. Can he? We all. I think we're all in agreement. Yes, he can. Imagine this. Base, if if you were an alien and you came down from Mars, and this is the first year you've ever watched basketball, would you look and say, yeah, this is a team they could probably sustain without Giannis? I'm t- So I, oh. I get what he's done in the past. Yeah. I get what he's done in the past. Oh, I'm yeah. asking if you came down right now, I'm, watch Damian make- Lillard. Go ahead. Okay. If I'm an alien, do I have the game film of games where <laughs> Damian Lillard has played and Giannis has not? Sure, you you have all game feel from this year. You have every you have you, what I'm saying is the only thing you can base your judgment on is everything that's happened within the, since since Damian Lillard was traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. That's everything you have. That's what you can go forward with and make the determination on whether you think you can win a couple games without him. Well, you know what? If I'm an alien, I probably can't get past recency bias. So to hell with it. Now, why would I look at the entire season? I'm gonna look at the last five games if I'm an alien. Why would I have the ability to to to, to reason in the first place? So yeah, what? I think we certainly can rock with it. I think we certainly can rock. <laughs> I mean, look, if I'm an alien, right, or I'll just pick and choose the games where Giannis didn't play, and then I'll make my assessment there. Because I definitely think that Dame is Dame is talented enough. Dame is a good enough player. This team is good enough to win a couple of games, especially in the first round without Giannis. One hundred percent. I JT, think this team. JT, this is not, I, I hear you saying the first round. Last year was the first round. I know you said not the same team, but again, here's the different. Here's the kicker though. This year in the first round, you're not playing a box. You're not getting Chicago. You're not. This is not a normal two seven type. You may get the Philadelphia seventy sixers, who were a top three seed all year with Joel and B coming back. I'm not saying they're world beaters. I'm just saying this isn't like a. Hey, this ain't your old NBA where the one eight one beats eight all the time, two beats seven. Maybe you have a three six upset and four five is a toss up. That's not, there is so much more parity in the NBA right now. That's all I'm getting at, and, and I think, and I don't care who it is, Indiana. Miami, uh, Philly, I, I think you you are in for a battle. And we just talked about the other – on a couple other shows we just talked about, you can't afford to lose – we said can't afford to lose one game. You can't afford to lose home court. You have not played well on the road. So factor that into the alien analysis. I don't know that I can go on the road and beat anybody. I, in, in, in fact, if I'm doing my alien analysis, Doc Rivers told me the team was unserious, unprepared on the road. That's one of the last things I heard from Doc Rivers was that this team did not lack the, the mentality to play on the road. I don't know that I – my thing is this, and I'm not saying they can't win. I'm just saying I don't know that I trust this basketball. I don't know that I trust them all the way with Giannis. I damn sure don't know if I trust them without him. Right, but I hear you, but I, I do think that this is a different team from last year, and we can't we can't, we can't we can't be scared of the ghosts from last year's season right? because this, game, this, this team is just different. It's 100%. I mean, the coaches are different. The personnel is different. The key impact players are different. You just I, – I, I, I hear you on last year, but don't let last year be the reason that – be the determining factor in you deciding to rest Giannis for a game or maybe two if you have to, if it's in the best interest of this team and if it's in the best interest of this season. Because, Trey, the, the one thing I don't want to see is you rush Giannis back in game one, he plays game one, and then he's out for game two. Or he's out for game two and three. Or then you got this lingering issue here, and it's like, well, we got to hope that calf holds up. Because the other thing is, what, what are the chances that Giannis needs to play 40 minutes every night? He's got to. Exactly. So now you're going to play 40 minutes every night with a bat. How long that going to work? How long is that going to work before you have a major issue if that cap is right? My and you question gotta... is, my question is, is two game is two days because you're going to have two days off between game one and game two days going to be all the difference between you 100 percent versus and I, if you that's my that's my thing if you're close enough to play two days from now I feel like you're close enough to play the two days prior that that is a I, 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 that's just how I feel about it I don't know yeah I, well so where I'm at with it is it's going to depend on matchups like. <laughs> Do you really want to rely on Damian Lillard playing defense versus Tyrese Maxey, Brooke on Joel Embiid, and then it's and then it's toss up everywhere else? Is Buddy Heald and and Kelly Oubre going to outplay our guys? Possible. So you might need that X factor out there for the first two games in Giannis, and so I think that's that's a big thing. They're just going to have to look at matchups and. 
you know, maybe you get away with it versus a team like Indiana. But I don't know. Obi Toppin, my boy, been playing playing well off the bench. He he poses a threat as a, as a four man. So they have some interior presence with Siakam and uh, Miles Turner. And so yeah, it's just gonna have to be matchup based for me. But I like I said, I I say play him. And I, and I see other people saying, oh, it's gonna it's not gonna be Philly. It's gonna be Miami. Okay, what's my did not okay the last time if last time I checked the last time the Milwaukee Bucks beat Miami in a series. Do you remember, did somebody tell me who was guarding uh, Jimmy Butler? Drew. It was, yeah, no, I'm talking about when they oh. beat him in a series. It was 2021. Giannis, they put Giannis yeah, on Jimmy Giannis. Butler. That's right. Do we have a guy that can def- – so even if Dame right. – okay, you're talking about offense. Right. Do we have a guy that can really defend Jimmy Butler? Now, I will say this Maybe one, Crowder Drew. if you throw him out there. But I, I mean, Crowder, I, eh. Well, I'll say I this too, though. I will say this. Because Jimmy Butler has another game that is determined or based around pump fakes and you jumping and getting to the foul line, they just have – they're having a hard time calling those fouls. So I – I, I do predict that Jimmy, and I, I'm saying all this, I'm kind of talking on both sides here. I, I do predict Jimmy Butler is going to have a, a I, I don't see it this year from him because, again, he he relies so much on grifting, getting guys up, and, again, just stay down. Stay down and make him hit that jumper. Don't let him get to the line. Don't let him do all the extra. Stay down. I don't care who's on him. Stay down. And they are not going to call those fouls, man. They're they are just not calling them. Don't, don't give him the easy way out. So I, I have a feeling he's not going to have the same – all this play, he's doing commercials, playoff, Jimmy. I, I really do hope that we do. I, I kind of hope we play Miami because I, I, I'm so tired of this playoff Jimmy mess. It, it, you know, you know, I hate the heat culture stuff. You know, I don't like the playoff Jimmy stuff. So I, 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 I would love to see it. You, you, you about to perm that hair. He about to get out there with the, uh, with the, with the flat iron press. He about to get, he about to, uh, with the flat iron. Press. Well, you know, what's the little, the little joint, not the curling iron, but you know, the little, uh, <laughs> little yeah, the little straightener. He about to get out there with that, right? Throw the S oh, curling. Yeah, the the yeah, you know their their, Jimmy's gonna do their fans are also just insufferable. So I'd love yeah, to take I know, it to I know they're going to be like, in here right, talking yeah, crazy. Especially if you, if you lose to them. But yeah, I would love to, to face Miami. I wouldn't care. I think we could beat them too. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so again, a lot of people. Well, this isn't last year's team. I just, I, I, I hear you. Karan Jammer says a uh, flat iron. Um, Appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I hear you, but, but yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I just don't know. Again, I, I don't. I only, I said it before. I trust one guy in the basketball. I trust Giannis. That's that's and, the only guy I know I can trust night in, night out. Jay Wine makes a good point. He's like, look, the Heat would have to defend us too. That's true. That's one hundred percent true. Especially if we start clicking. I mean, I, I think, I think if our offense really starts clicking, now, granted, without Giannis, that may be tough. But our offense starts clicking, I think any team could be overwhelmed. Let me ask this: Who do, who do you trust? Who do you trust to put a better defense in the game plan? Eric Bolster or Doc Rivers? Yeah. Spo. Oh, right. There. Okay. Right. Well, the thing so, about Spo, he gets the, he 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 gets res, he. he he helps players accomplish more than they are really capable of. If that makes any sense, like I don't know how he. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it is a heat culture thing, or maybe 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 it is a heat culture thing. But even though I, I, I just kind of feel like with a heat culture, like yo, I need y'all to win a few more championships before y'all start talking about heat culture. Because making it there is nice, but I kind of feel like we celebrate the runner ups when we talk about heat culture. I mean, I get it. They got three championships in what twenty years. But at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, they've been to six. But can we really? Can you? I mean, are can, can you really? Can runner-ups hold the weight that championships do? No, they, absolutely not. <sighs> and they they do that for Jimmy Butler too, acting like he's the greatest playoff performer ever. Buddy, you still haven't got a ring. So that's all I'm looking for out of him. He's got to get one. But go ahead. Um. Yeah. So again, I, I'm. I, like I said, I don't, I don't have I don't have anything more on that. Um, like I said, we'll we'll see kind of kind of how this plays out, what happens with Giannis, um, and we'll wait for some more updates as as well as they come in. Um, let's get to the the Twitter comments here uh, for one second, if I can get to them. Um, of course, I always have a problem when I try to do this. Uh, all right, let me see. Okay, um, here we go. At Kashaya Todd says after roller coaster season, Bucks fans needed these last two wins. I don't know how this will translate to the playoffs, but it feels, um, but it feels good. Um, re- oh, it feels relieving. Um, rated R Noop four one four says, "Yo, this is best win of the year. yo. This is the best win of the year. I I love. I like Justin. I don't know best win of the year. We played the best game of the year. All y'all hating on Bobby. Chill the heck out." Notions of Nick says, "Good win. Would like to see Doc run some plays for Bees to get him out of his slump. We may need him to step up around one. Also, Bobby." I, I mean, he needs to get shots. I mean, he's got he to hit shots. I don't know. Doc got to run them for him. He gets open shots all the time. 
Uh, Drew Barry says this Bucks team is hilarious. Um, and then uh, we'll do a couple more here. Uh, at Eagle Ruby 58 says, I said it after the last game. I'll say it again. Pat Bev needs to start. He does. Malik just seems to have lost his shot. He'll still be needed in the playoffs as he be able to get hot. But the energy and basketball IQ Bev brings is invaluable right now. Uh, and then at G- Gab RMJ 32 says, Pat Bev is the needle mover and will keep this team moving. He absolutely has been. Um, let's uh, let's get to some game balls, man. Where, where, where are you going game ball wise? I'm going Bobby Portis. I'm going Bobby Portis for putting the team on his back for the good for for a good for def, certainly in that first half and for you know part of that second half as well. Really impressed with the 30 points and the nine rebounds, but more impressed with the five steals. How about Bobby Portis, man? One time for him. Yeah, that might be what the first or second game ball we give him to Bobby Portis all year. What about Boss Man Nine Nine? Though they call him <laughs> Jay Crowder. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm giving it to my guy Jay Crowder. Look, logging a DMP last night versus a contender. And then coming in tonight, playing his role exceptionally well. I thought he did well on both sides of the ball, um, you know, forcing turnovers, getting out in transition, knocking down the open ones that he had. And I think this is something that they can build on, not only just him, but the Bucks, because you're going to have to recognize that these players are inconsistent as hell. And so it's going to have to be next man up mentality. Jay Crowder provided that tonight. It could be Malik Beasley in the playoffs. It could be A.J. Green in the playoffs. It can be Ajax in the playoffs. That's what I love, and that's what Doc Rivers is going to have to recognize uh, to make this team really be successful in the playoffs because he's got to have tight leashes on some of these guys. But some some nights we just, one person has it and one person doesn't, you got to find those matchups quickly. Um, I, I don't want the Dane folks to get mad at us, so game ball tonight. I'm going to give it to Damian Lillard. So we all go three different guys here. Dame, 29, 6, 9 assists, 10 and 19. Again, and for me, the biggest part about Damian Lillard wasn't the shots. It was the decision-making. It was the, I'm going out and I'm going to attack a mismatch every time I get it, and I'm going to execute. And so I think he did a really nice job. Both halves to get 14 in the first half. So he finished with 29. So it was it 15 in the second half. Um, balanced effort on both in, on, on, on um, excuse me, both halves. And I think that was really a lot of the difference tonight. A lot of Bobby, Bobby, Bobby chance in the uh, in the chat. Uh, Jay Wan says Bobby game ball. Uh, Karan Jammer says uh, Ajax on button. No, Ajax is Ajax is going to play um, against the against the Heat. Uh, I, Unfortunately, I don't, I don't he's not going to play. Um, Doc yeah, put that red shirt back on, and I, yeah. I hate it. I absolutely hate the fact that Doc does this. Um, let's take a look around and see what happened in the NBA. Again, lots of intriguing, interesting matchups um, that have playoff implications. It's a 58-58 tie right now between the T-Wheels and the Nuggets. The Suns are up 11 on the uh, Clippers right now in the second quarter. The Cavs get a win. That's important. They were down in Memphis, but they do get a win tonight. How about the Dallas Mavericks? How about the Dallas? And I, I got to stop right there because, you know, a lot of people, so Mark Gomes, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with all the Jason Kidd stuff that I, you know, that I've spouted in the past. I got so, you talk about getting hate, the Bobby Portis apology for I don't know what I'm talking about this before. Jason Kidd, that's two out of three seasons in Dallas where Jason Kidd has put up 50 wins for the Dallas Mavericks. Y'all talk, people, well, I'm saying y'all, people have talked about firing Jason Kidd, Jason Kidd sucks on it. That man's about to get an extension. That man has outdone everything. Rick Carlisle did not get that out of this Dallas Mavericks team with Luka Doncic. Did not get it out of a guy out of the Dallas Mavericks. Kyrie Irving, Jason Kidd might be a miracle worker. That man, last time I saw Kyrie, he didn't even like basketball. This man's playing legit basketball right now. No distractions, none to BS. He put up 25 and I mean 25, 3, 4, 2 steals, 10 to 15. Hey, shout out to Jason Kidd. Y'all got to stop the Jason Kidd hate. Uh, he's a solid basketball coach. Uh, the Nets beat the Raptors tonight. The Horn just. Very unserious basketball for the Atlanta Hawks. They lose to the Hornets, 115-114, locks them into the 10 seed. Um, so I think that means they're – and then the Thunder beat the Spurs. So I think that means, yes, Atlanta will have to travel to Chicago in that 10-9 game. Trey Young came back tonight, but that's going to be interesting to see who wins that. I think the top eight is going to be, as we see here, man, wouldn't everybody love to – well, I don't know. I think people probably want Miami or Philly in – um, because you want whoever gets that eight seed to play, have to play. You want Boston to have a tough matchup. Um, again, but and well, I, well, I don't know. People keep saying that Philly is gonna get the six. They're a game behind, so they're a game behind Indiana. Indiana's won three straight, they're seven three in the last ten. Philly's won six straight, and they're also a game behind Orlando. So I you know, I, I don't know. Orlando has lost the last two, and, and again, they have one against the Bucks coming up as as well. So 
we'll see how that goes. Um, and, and yes, we're, I mean, so the Bucks are a game and a half up on New York. Uh, they're two games ahead of Cleveland. They've guaranteed themselves at least the four seed. Um, and, you know, likely that New York and Cleveland, somebody's probably going to lose um, in there. And you'll, so you, like I said, you're, I, I think the worst you can go, you're going to go is three. Um, and I, I think that's a good spot for the Bucks, whether, you know, wherever you're at, two, three. I, I, I like it for the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, so, any, any issues or anybody want to say anything about the standings here? We just have to see, you know, it's, it's very, very, very tight. But again, what did, what did Lisa say tonight? She said something like if we, we, since we win tonight, the most amount of games we can lose is 33. And like you said, our floor is the four seed, which but we're more likely going to, going to, going to hit the three. I'm fine with that. That's fine. Yeah. I just think locking up that two or two or three is just huge. Get on the opposite side of, of Boston and then, you know, play, play your cards there. I think you definitely have the advantage over a lot of these teams in terms of just personnel and having the best two guys on the floor if Giannis is out there in the first round at least and then just throughout the playoffs. So I think you can really create some momentum just by like we've always talked about uh, in recent post games is just winning that first one. Just just give this team that confidence that it needs to continuously go out there and uh, play good playoff basketball. And so that's that's really what I'm looking forward to. I don't really care uh, who we play because I think out of those three teams, you still you you still should beat them. And um, just being on the opposite side of Boston is good. And then I'll just talk about uh, Dallas real quick. Look, I think that they made the right moves at the deadline as well, and I think that 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 played a big part in it. And you know they look they're playing connected, playing hard. That's kind of what we ask for in a basketball team is just being able to bring that consistency of effort every single night and they they look pretty good so uh, i'm interested to see the west side too obviously you've got those the young yeah. teams you got the you got the young teams who have had good records thunder uh new orleans but how will they be able to you know get through the playoffs if they have to meet each other or minnesota um if they if they have to meet each other how will they how will they fend versus the denver Nuggets? <coughs> i think that'll be uh, some of the things I'm looking for on that side as well. So I'm I'm excited, man. I'm I'm just ready to get there. But uh, ultimately, you just got to get Giannis healthy, and then let's let's go. I'm ready. To your point, Chris, the Western Conference is actually insane. Like the all top five seeds have 50 wins. They're separated by five and a half games. The right. Pelicans are the six. They have, the Pelicans have 47 wins. Phoenix has 46. And again, the 10th place team in the West, the Golden State Warriors are 44 and 35. So there is a bloodbath out in the West. And, and that is going to be very, very fun to see how that turns out. Um, and I'm, I'm interested in seeing what, what happens out there. Uh, and again, the Minnesota Denver playing right now for seeding, and we'll see um, what happens tonight with that basketball game. But yeah, now the, the, this NBA playoff, especially on, on each side, there's not a lot of juice unless I think in the first round, like I said, maybe that Boston Milwaukee to see if Philly or Miami can make an upset. Everywhere else, I mean, I don't think there's a ton of, of real juice. Uh, but uh, but if, I think everybody's waiting on that Milwaukee Boston finals, East Coast finals that 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 would hit like like crack in the eighties. Um, just saying. Um, the only other thing I wanted to get at and talk about with you guys um, is Drew Holiday. What do you think about Drew Holiday? The breaking news came down tonight: a blockbuster offseason after a blockbuster offseason trade. Drew Holiday agrees to a four-year, $135 million contract extension. Says yes, says yes. Uh, <laughs> Mr. He can, buy a whole, he can buy a whole lot of that. Right, he can. He, he, can, he, he can, can. He can buy but a whole lot of that. Give me your thoughts on, on Drew Holiday. That's a big extension for Drew Holiday. That, I think, takes him until he's like 37. It's a lot of money to Drew Holiday. You're, you're a fifth option. That's all I'm saying. It's a lot of money to a fourth, fifth option over there. Yeah, I didn't know it was getting down like that. When I saw it, I was like, "Well, what's it average? Thirty? Is it thirty-five a year? What's what's one one thirty-five and four? Thirty-four, thirty-five, nah, 30, about, 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 almost thirty-four. Little under thirty-four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Little under thirty-four a year. Wow. Right, go ahead, Drew. Man, for a fourth option, hey, wow. I guess, man, it hasn't really looked like it's worked this year. I, I. I I haven't really looked at his numbers. Probably could. I, I'm going to assume they're probably close to some career lows in some areas, just because I mean he's not getting the shots or the you know or the, the scoring. But 
I mean, I guess they see something that we don't, and more power to him. Was he living in Boston, Back Bay or whatever? What's the nice part? Is that right? Yes, yeah, so he's, he's, I've never he's, been Back Bay in the city. Yeah, well, listen, I was driving around Boston, and you know, the wife was like, "Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's, um, let's go, let's go to one of these coffee shops." And man, I was in part of the city where I said, "Man, we are not welcome." Let me tell you, we are not welcome. So I'm assuming that, uh, that Drew Holiday's assimilated well, because you know, Boston fans. Eh. It can be real iffy, but no, I mean, you got to be happy for him. I know he was upset about the trade from here. He said some comments. His wife was. He talked about the community and how much it hurt him, right? And he's and he and it doesn't really sound like he's over that. But having said that, you know, good good for him. Seems like a, seems like a decent human. I never met the guy before, uh, and this is of course more money for him and his family, and gives him some stability. And and I certainly hope he 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 um, brings the same energy he had in Milwaukee to his new community in Boston because it looks like he's going to be there a while. This is wild. This is wild. I don't know how you go to the conclusion of that right before the playoffs start when he's really not a great playoff performer. Smart man. Uh, Smart man. I just – why wouldn't you wait to the end of the season to see what he brings you? Because ultimately if he's any bit a, a part of your downfall, you know your fan base, the Boston Celtics fans, are going to want his head on a stick because they've been fiending for a damn chip uh, for for a long time. So – yeah, I just I think it's an extreme conclusion to give him 135 mil, and he's also talked about retiring, um, which I, about probably not now, but like um, you don't know how much how much you're gonna get out of him in, when he's 37 years old. You really don't know how much you're getting out of him now <laughs> because you're beating up on the Hornets and and stuff like that. But when it comes down to it, I mean, you've looked underwhelming, like I said, against the Bucks. So yeah, I just uh, I don't know. I mean, that's 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 their problem, not me. So go ahead, go ahead, Boston. We we'll, we love it. I love it. <laughs> well, his, fans want his head on the stick. It's crazy, but um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, <laughs> um, no, I, I think that Drew Holiday. So he's shooting the ball. He he is shooting the ball really well. He's shooting the ball well. Corner three. So he, he's shooting it well. Like you said, the numbers aren't there. He's fourth, fifth option again. That's a lot of money. I don't know. Maybe in three, four years, you know how the NBA salaries rise. Maybe thirty million won't be a lot for a fourth option in four or five years. I don't know. Um, it seems like it is. And again, I, I think to your point though, Chris, that play and we were said in the chat, playoff Drew, all those things that, that he's had mm-hmm. issues with. I mean, he had moments. Um, don't get me wrong, but like, yeah, you know. But to be issues. but to be fair, he can do that as a fourth option. You don't, you he can shoot a tour date as a fourth option if he's playing D because you're not expecting anything more than him. You're expecting him to be what a presence on that perimeter, so or maybe lock down the other team's one, uh, a point guard. So okay, because you're not because again you're not expecting what you were expecting from him when you were with the Bucks. So maybe it's really not much of a material issue there. Maybe not. I don't know. If you give him thirty million dollars a year, I'm, I'm expecting some. some well, some, some, and, and basically, you better have you made a couple him big steal, <laughs> and you're not going to be, and you're not going to be able to trade him. That's the thing. Who's going to want that contract? Well, and and yeah, and he's going to have to continue to shoot well in the playoffs. I I, I, yeah. I think yeah, he can't shoot you out of games. I think that's the big thing. So we'll see how Drew Holiday performs in the playoffs. Will he have a, a huge impact? We that remains to be seen. We've seen Drew Holiday at his best in 2021. Somebody in the comments mentioned he got the steal in 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 uh, in. Um, Phoenix did the Valley Oop, all of that stuff. He's he's been a part of some great moments here in Milwaukee. But uh, but again, y'all, what they say, only as good as the last time I saw you. Last time I saw you, Jimmy Butler told him he owned him. Um, so that's how that went. Uh, it was a one seventeen to ninety nine victory. The Milwaukee Bucks have uh, have followed up a four game losing skid with a two game winning streak. Uh, the Bucks play again Friday, right against the um, is it Friday against the uh, against Oklahoma City? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Friday night, OKC, NBA TV, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. We'll be here at the Cream City Crossover. Tomorrow night, catch us on a special edition of uh, Bucks in 69, 73 the game, Worldwide iHeartRadio. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll talk some Bucks on the, uh, on, on, in, in, on your drive home if you're in Milwaukee, like I said, or, or cut us on on the, uh, on the, on the iHeart app, and you'll get us there. And we are driving this season to a close, um, that was the last home game for the Milwaukee Bucks. They are 49 and 31. I would like to see them get 50 wins. Um, just a nice, nice number to, to hit. So I, I want to see them split here uh, as the regular season comes to a close. And again, so the regular season ends, right? Uh, 
Sunday. Sunday. That's right. So the regular season ends on Sunday. We man, we are right. Uh, we're on the precipice of the playoffs. These are the games, man. Like I mean, I, I think it, it's gonna hit you. It's gonna hit when 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 that play when that matchup is finally announced. And whether it's a two seed or a three seed, and we're getting that seven or six Philly uh, boss. I'm excuse me, Philly, Miami, and whoever it is. That's when it's gonna hit. Like, and I and I know everybody's feeling good, and everybody's you know we we all good. And I, I saw it in the comments. This is not last year. There's going to be an, an anxiousness uh, until you see how that first game plays out with or without Giannis. There's going to be again. I think everybody's cautiously optimistic, um, but we'll see how 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 it, how it rolls out. Uh, and how it plays out after night one. Now, I, I submit to you this. I truly think game one's going to tell me how the series goes. I, re- I really do. Like, I think if the Bucks don't show up in game one, I, I, I think they're going to be cooked. Um, and, you know, so I, I, I think for my confidence, I'm going to need to see the Milwaukee Bucks show up game one, ready, locked in, prepared to play. Um, and if not, you know, I'm, I'm preparing for disappointment. So, again, I'm hoping they – they show up and show out um, from the from the very onset. One seventeen nine nine. Any final words on the Bucks tonight? Man, you know what I'm gonna also say. Uh, I think we I think we've done enough post game shows to qualify for the uh, you know, the NBA awards, Absolutely. right? Like we 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 did this thing, and I remember we were just all kind of kicking in the group chat, and it started out as an idea, and we said, man, let's uh let's do post game shows because we just didn't like the way the Bucks were being covered by the national guys. We would see Stephen A. Uh, Mike Wilbon, someone who I really respect, come on TV and say Bobby Portis is the third most important player, one of the most important player on this team. What do you say? Second most important player, something crazy. Um, and we and 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 then we would see that. We would just watch a lot of these NBA guys who watch four or five Bucks games all year and try to try to give uh, critical analysis that a lot of times was wrong or just I think I think key components were missing. So we appreciate all y'all for just rocking with us and, and literally night in night out, just giving us your time um, and enjoying it and. You know, to you guys, yeah. Salute to salute to you, Trey. Salute to you, Chris. Yeah, we we have literally done. I don't know how many videos we have on YouTube since starting this channel and starting this, but uh, a lot, a lot, right? And and nobody can say that you know we 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 have not put in the work. And you know, so again, appreciate you guys. Appreciate the listeners and everybody who allows us to to provide this content and all your comments, all your likes, all your subscriptions. Certainly would be nothing without the the, the people that tune in and watch every night. And uh, you know, guys, we got two more games left this year. So, man, we're going to keep the momentum going for y'all. And hopefully we'll be able to do something nice for the playoffs. Yeah, the Cream City crossover viewers, you guys are amazing. You guys are awesome. You guys show up every night, no matter what. Like tonight, look, back-to-back, playing the Orlando Magic. And the Bucks get a good dub, and we still got a buzz in here. So, I love it. I love what you guys do, Trey, John, what you guys bring every night. The energy is always amazing. Uh, look, this is what we are getting excited for, right? The playoff the playoff vibes in Pfizer is, is going to be electric. And I, I love the energy of NBA crowds on every possession. And I think that's that's what I'm most looking forward to because we did have March Madness in here. And, uh, and those games were always exciting. And so now you, you get the you get the big dogs coming in and, and it's playoff time in seven game series. And I'm, I'm excited to lock in. It'll be it'll be super fun. Um, yeah. So, like I said, just appreciate everybody tuning in. We got more coming. Look, this thing ain't stopping. Um, good words. Appreciate that uh, from both of you. Um, Iron Man says, Bart Scott can't wait. Uh, King of Kings says, great show, guys. Dan Harris says, you guys do a great job. King of Kings, more claps. Derek Mallett says, big thing here. I rock with y'all boys. Um, so, again, uh, appreciate it. Uh, everybody, again, appreciate it. Uh, JT, Chris, and we'll we'll do some more of this as we as we uh, we have a couple more games left. So I won't uh, bid adieu just yet. But uh, again, yeah, absolutely, everybody for for rocking with us. Uh, and again, everybody, we we just done a a, a, a solid job of, uh, of of covering the Bucks. I think you said it well, JT. We um we here every night. I think that's a big part of it: consistency uh, and 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 just uh, just being in, putting the work. So, good job to everybody. Appreciate it. again. We, again, we definitely thank the viewers every single night. You guys started. Uh, like I said, I, I, I'll, I'll say that for for, for another game because I think both uh, JT and Chris, you guys covered it well. But yeah, so again, appreciate everybody for listening. We want to thank, as always, our sponsors, um, the law office of Daly and Johnson. We need defense wear. Off the court. Uh, 608-893-8370. Get Adam 411 West Main Street, Suite 110, Madison, Wisconsin. I said 608-893-8370. Oh, no. There we go. Seven zero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Spanish listener. 
What you say? Is it Sacinta? Oh yeah, you can go. Oh, you want seventy? Okay, okay. Is right? like yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 by the way, Iron like Man, Iron Iron Man Clan TV said Paul City crossover. That's funny. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's funny. And so my and the next and and again, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm gonna butcher this person's name, but I, I'm gonna go with Masana Mazibuko. Said, would Zach Eady be a good addition for the Bucks as a draft prospect? And maybe that's something that we talk about later on i'll and just uh, i mean i'll just touch on it real quick um look i just don't know how how well he matches up with Giannis in the in the in the same front court can't be a brook replacement without a shooter uh, as a big so uh you're looking at dayton's deron holmes to, to kind of fill that void but uh but yeah. well, you don't think you don't think zach Eady could come in and back boys down and break them all I'm, you know <laughs> That's crazy. I'm just but saying, no, I think, he, no i think he can but i just think i think we're at a point in uh, Dame and Giannis's no career. Diddy. No, no, Diddy. I think we're at a point in Dame and Giannis's career where that just. Uh, I don't. I don't think you take a chance on that. I think there's there's a little more better options out there that that you might be able to find. So, yeah. Or I mean, trade pieces. Obviously, you might get somebody that's already in the league. Yeah. Um, yeah. Zaggy's trash. Um, but uh, I'm just saying. But um, but yeah, I don't know. He'll, he'll end up doing something. I don't know. He'd be probably better than Bonnie James in the league though as a prospect. Um. But anyway, uh, yeah, man. Again, we appreciate everybody for listening. Well, he's, they, they keep talking about him like he's they they you know they compare him to Pat Bev. I'm like, no, nah, now he's Pat Bev. Come on, nah, nah, well, okay. Um, well, now, way, way to close the show. Too. Way to, so, way to, boy, way to close the show with a hammer. Now you now you now you start more conversation here as we wrap up. Yeah, back. we we can get we we'll get we can get back at this uh, next next post game. We can talk about Bronny. Um, yeah, we'll be back like I said tomorrow. All you well, no, uh, Bucks and sixty. Appreciate everybody for watching, listening, subscribe, like, follows, all that. We appreciate it. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend to tell your grandma's friend um, about the Cream City crossover. Uh, this has been the Cream City Media Group production from the Groove Trek Cosby Third. JT. Trucker has CK, baby. So I'm just trying to find try spice. Right. Swimming nude like in it. the Bass Pro Shop. I got you, brother. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, if we are your enemies, it's only because we dare to tell you the truth. Don't take no wood, Nichols. Courage.